So when Cummins first started in 1919, this was the first type of engine that, that we built. This is a six horsepower uh, engine uh, using the V fuel system. Uh, kind of an early early diesel uh, technology. Uh, single cylinder, so you got a horizontal piston here. And feel free to come up and take a closer look at it. Once I'm ready to start, I'll give you some warning and then you can back up. But, but uh, come on up and take a closer look at it. I'll kind of explain a little bit about how it works before we start it up. Um, yeah, single cylinder, uh, horizontal piston. You can see, one of the things I like about these old engines is all of the parts that are hidden inside a modern engine, you can see on, on this engine. Um, it's got a compression release so that you can make it easier to uh, bar the engine over. Hold the intake valve open a bit so you can uh, talk to fight against the uh, compression. But um, anyway, as you, you know, get around this side here. Um, as I crank it over, you can see the piston coming out of the cylinder there. You've got the connecting rod there, the crankshaft. You kind of see all those working parts. Um, there's a gear here driving the camshaft, which is down below, and then it's a couple of tappets down there with long push rods that actuate the, uh, the rocker arms, which are out here on the, the front side of the engine for the intake and exhaust. And then uh, this tank here, um, there's actually two, two sections of it. Uh, this side here is uh, a fuel pump. So the fuel tank for this is down in the cast iron base in the bottom. This is your fuel filler. Um, so you fill the fuel in there. And then as the engine's running, it actuates this uh, lift pump. There's this lever here that runs off the, off the cam. And um, that brings fuel from the tank down below up into this tank. And then it's gravity feed from there around to the injector. And then there's a governor system. Um, there's flyweight governors down in here with linkage that ties to the injector to control how much fueling uh, goes to the to the injector, and so that's it's tuned to maintain a constant speed as your load changes. So this engine was rated at six horsepower at 520 RPM. So if you think about like a six horsepower lawnmower engine, this is like 1,100 pounds of cast iron to make six horsepower. So we've come a long way in 100 years, um, but this was the technology of the day. Um, so, with that, I will uh, get ready to start it up. So it's not quite like a modern engine where you just jump in and, and turn the key and, and start it up. There's a few things I need to do to, to get ready here, so I'll kind of talk through that as I go. Um, as I mentioned, while the engine's running, this uh, lift pump brings fuel up into this tank. And so I'm going to manually actuate this valve, this uh, pump, to bring fuel up into this. And 
So we do have a ventilation system here that'll help draw the exhaust out, but you will see it smokes a bit when it uh, first starts up. Another thing is, um, I'd recommend not to be in line with the hand crank here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just in case. So, even if you have steel toed shoes on, that wouldn't help you. engine primarily marketed for? Um, so basically anything that you could connect to with a the pulley. There's a flat belt pulley on the other side. They were typically used for like around the farm, things like water pumps, uh, feed grinders, uh, sawmills, that kind of thing. Also sometimes used in industrial applications like in a, in a small factory you have a, a belt for this engine running from a line shaft and a series of uh, pulley pumps to operate other machines. So, primarily stationary power. Yeah. How long was it in production for? Uh, from starting in 1919 up until about 1924, 1925 time period. Mm -hmm. So now, what's its primary fuel? Uh, so they would. Right now we're burning kerosene. Okay. But it would also burn you know, diesel fuel or whatever. Uh, it's actually a series of shims in the uh, connection rod, so you can vary the compression ratio huh. to adjust it depending on what kind of fuel you're burning. So maintenance? Maintenance uh, pretty easy? Yeah. Um, it doesn't have a pressurized oiling system, but it does have uh, grease cup to lubricate the main bearings, and rod bearings, and several other things within the engine. So you have to pack those with grease, then go around and you know, turn the cap down a little bit each day and kind of force grease into those joints every once in a while. Mm. That was mostly uh, about all the maintenance required. Okay. Is this your uh, one of your favorite engines? I guess. Yeah. Yeah, this is one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. 